In the last video, we saw the Newton's first law of motion. And in this video, we'll explore the Newton's second law of motion. And to understand it, we'll do some experiments. And to do the experiment, I'll take the same air track that I took in the previous video. And if you haven't seen that video, click on the bell icon. Okay, now attach the air track with spring scale and pull the spring scale with a force F1. Let the force be F1. Then we observe that the cart accelerates with some acceleration. Let this acceleration be A1. Now repeat this experiment but with twice the force. So the magnitude for the force becomes 2 times F1. Now we observe that the acceleration of the cart is twice the previous value. This time it was A. This becomes 2 times A. Now from here we can conclude that the acceleration is proportional to the force. At more the value of force, it becomes twice. Acceleration also becomes twice. So acceleration is proportional to force. Now again repeat the experiment, but this time the mass of the cart becomes 2m. Initially it was m, now you just doubled the mass. And force remains the same, that is f1. Now you observe that the acceleration of the cart is 1 over 2 times a. That it becomes half. Increasing the mass, acceleration becomes half. So we conclude that acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. And combining these results, we can write that acceleration is equals to force over mass. And rearranging the terms, we can write that force is equals to mass times acceleration. And this is the equation given by the Newton's second law of motion. And in general, there may be uh, several force acting on an object in different direction. So in this case, we write that F net is sigma F, where this sigma is a Greek letter. And by applying the Newton's second law of motion, we can write that acceleration of the object, this would be equals to sigma f, the net forces, divided by the mass. Or we can write that sigma f is equals to mass times acceleration. Now let's see the formal statement given by the Newton. Now Newton says that if an object of mass m is acted on by net force f net, it will experience an acceleration that is equals to net force divided by the mass. Since the net force is a vector, acceleration is also a vector. In fact, the direction of the object's acceleration is same as the direction of the net force acting on it. So this was a formal statement given by the Newton. Now we'll see the Newton's second law of motion in component form. And the Newton's second law holds independently for each coordinate system. So in the x direction, we can write that sigma fx is equals to mass times acceleration in the x direction. Similarly, in the y direction, we can write sigma fy is equals to mass times acceleration in the y direction. And the, in the z direction, sigma fz is equals to mass times acceleration in the z direction. So this is a very useful uh, form of Newton's second law of motion and it will going to help us while solving problems. Okay, now thanks, what happens when the net force on an object is zero? That is, I'm saying that sigma f, this is equals to zero. Then what will going to happen? Now, according to the Newton's second law of motion, we can write that the acceleration a, this is sigma f over the mass, and since sigma f goes to 0, so this would become 0 over m, and that is equals to 0. Therefore, if sigma f is 0, the acceleration is 0, and acceleration is 0 means the velocity is constant. So velocity of an object is constant. And in other words, we can say, if net force on an object is 0, the object moves with constant velocity. This is the Newton's first law. Thus we see that the Newton's first law and the second law are consistent with one another. Now we'll discuss the unit of force. 
So the SI unit of force is Newton and one Newton is defined as the force required to give one kilogram of mass an acceleration of one meter per second squared. So this is the way we define the one Newton. So the SI unit for the mass we have kgs and the acceleration is meter per second squared and the force is Newton. And in symbol we can write capital N. Now in CGS system we write mass in grams and this acceleration in centimeter per second squared and force in CGS system is dyn. We write it as dyn. And finally the British units of force. Mass is uh, measured in slug and uh, this acceleration in feet per second squared and the force is in pound or we can write LB. We can also define the conversions 1 Newton is 10 to the power 5 dyne is equal to 0 0.225 pound and in everyday terms a Newton is roughly a quarter of a pound. Now let's take an easy example on the Newton's second law of motion. It says that the net force acting on an aeroplane has a magnitude of 1900 Newton and it acts in a positive x direction and the mass of the plane is 860 kgs. We need to find the acceleration. Now since the force is acting along the positive x, so we can write that the acceleration in the x direction, this would be sigma fx divided by the mass. The same equation given by the Newton. Okay, sigma fx we have uh, 1900 Newton divided by the mass is 860 kgs. For the solving, we'll get the answer as 2.2 meter per second squared. So this is the acceleration of the plane in the positive x direction. Now let's discuss one more question. It's a good and a conceptual question. It says that the metal head of a hammer has loosened. To tighten it, you drop the hammer down. Now the question arises, should you drop the hammer with the handle end down or the hammer with the head end down? Or either way, you'll get the same result. Now you may think that you'll get the same result in both ways, but this is not correct. Let's see what happens when you drop the hammer with head end down. Now when the head hits the table, it comes to rest, but the handle continues to move until a force brings it to rest. Now the handle is lighter than the head, thus force acting on it is less, resulting in less tightening. Okay, now let's take the other case. When you drop the hammer with the handle end down. Now when the handle of the hammer hits the table, it comes to rest. But the head with a huge inertia continues to move downward until the force acts on head to bring it to the rest. And since the metal head is heavy, the force acting on it is huge, resulting in more tightening. Therefore, the best way to tighten the hammer is to drop uh, the hammer with the handle end down. So option A is correct. So this is all with this video and in the next video, we'll discuss the free body diagram. We'll see you in the next video.